everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe. I know what you're thinking. Oh, God. 2013 has been so bereft of puzzle platformers, and maybe it's been a welcome change of pace for you. I want to say this is not a traditional puzzle platformer. In fact, it is possibly the most literal puzzle platformer I've ever played. This is from Adult Swim Games. You might remember them uh, as the publisher of Super House of Dead Ninjas. This has kind of a similar vibe. It's difficult to explain, but really easy to demonstrate. So why don't we just jump into our game here. We're going to hit play and single play, and uh, we've got a number of different avatars we can play as here, for lack of a better word. Uh, we have uh, the ninja, we have the jetpack, and we also have the cape, which actually allows us to glide. Each one of these has special powers. Ninja has a double jump, uh, jetpack has a jetpack. Why don't we play as the cape? He's kind of like the starting guy. And then we're going to go to uh, our very first level here, Troublesome Tech. And you will see what's going on fairly quickly here. So we're, you know, platforming, obviously, uh, as you might expect given the name of the game. But in addition to that, uh, we are also kind of playing a match three game, uh, like a bejeweled or like zookeeper style game. And it might not seem like immediately I can imagine a lot of people being like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't even understand what I'm watching. Trust me when I say that this is the kind of game that, that grows on you as you play it. When you first start playing it, maybe, uh, you know, the, the appeal isn't immediately there. Uh, but the more and more you play, the more addictive this gets. I think, you know, Adult Swim, I'm not going to say they've cornered the market on it, but they've done a really good job uh, so far with their Steam-published games of making, like, really addictive, simple, uh, fun-to-play games. And I think Super Puzzle Platformer definitely continues in that trend. I've only played about 45 minutes of it so far, but that was more than enough uh, to definitely get a feel for what the heck is going on here. So how does this work? This is uh, entirely a score-attacking game, so all we're trying to do is get the uh, maximum score possible. Uh, we get points... Four, as you can see, uh, okay, so that is, the, these enemies will fall sometimes, which is really bad for us, but, um, uh, we get points for, uh, A, uh, destroying blocks, especially if we manage to get a, like, combo going, oh, and when we get hit by blocks, by the way, we level down, as you can see right there, uh, but we also get points for picking up these, uh, little triangle things that drop when we manage to actually, uh, kill a block. So what I'm hoping for here, oh, that would require a little bit of platforming, is that we would actually... Oh, no, 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 be able to destroy, yes, that right there, oh my god, if I get hit one more time, I'm gonna die, so I have to stand here. Occasionally, we will run into situations like this, where uh, a lot of blocks will drop simultaneously, as you can see, there will also be chests, which will contain a number of our points there, those also factor into our experience as well. Uh, but from a, like, a score system, oh, we got an extra 100 there, that's actually really awesome. Um, from a score, oh, I jumped on the spikes and died, from a score standpoint, it's actually really easy, you know, uh, destroying one block. Gets you a certain amount of points, that is me. Uh, I'm in 6th place there as well, but also in 10th place. Uh, let's just restart here. Uh, really good about allowing you to restart really quickly, by the way. Uh, but yes, from a score attacking standpoint, or a score uh, mechanic standpoint, it's really, really simple. You know, if you uh, kill one block, you don't get very many points, as you can see, just one. If you kill two in a row, uh, you get uh, four. I'm just, I don't want to fall on the spikes here, so I'm kind of scared about this situation. Uh, I fell on the spikes. I think the way it works is it's almost like it, it works by squares, so you know, if you kill one block, one square is one. If you kill two blocks, two square is four, three is nine, and I think we killed six there and we got 36, which seems to make sense. So, you know, uh, the, obviously there's a, a huge kind of like, not economy of scale is not really the right word, but uh, a huge incentive to uh, destroying large swaths of blocks at the same time. By the way, those uh, kind of experience triangles that you can see there, they will kind of like fall, and they'll fall as if there was no floor for a few times. I wonder if I could actually glide across. Yeah, I managed to make it work reasonably well. So in terms of like depth, like Billy Mitchell style, like holding the world record of this game, I don't know what that's going to take. I'm not at that level yet. Uh, but what I will say is from a casual standpoint, this game is super fucking fun to play, really easy to jump into, uh, and, and really it's just accessible. It's the same kind of thing as Super House of Dead Ninjas where... You know, when you first play it it's, it, it, it's own simplicity kind of betrays the fact that there's a really fun game at, uh, at its core. Uh, you play it for the first time and you're like, ah, you know, this is fun, but, uh, you know, this could be a browser-based game or something like that. In fact, it might have originally been a browser-based game, uh, based on the fact that this is coming from Adult Swim, who I think is now branching into actually, like, paid content as opposed to just stuff on their website, which is good! Uh, they, they've got a great track record so far, and I think this will continue it, actually. Yeah, I got hit there. Uh, the, the way our health works kind of is not 100% sure to me. I think our uh, experience, uh, like, bar up there also kind of functions as our health. So the, uh, oh, that is awesome. Gotta get that gem. Uh, I think the, the more that is full, like, the more hits we can take. But at the same time, obviously, you don't want to take hits at all because that causes you to level down. Leveling down is really bad because it causes you to do less damage. So, you know, the more um, levels we have, the more damage we do. 
Uh, and thus, the quicker we can destroy blocks and the faster we can make good stuff happen here. So I'm going to try to set some high scores. There are other levels, but like I said, I've only played about um, 45 minutes of this so far, and I have not really had uh, an insane amount of success. I've had a good amount of success, but not an insane amount of success. So can we just talk briefly about how, like, funny the idea for this game is? It's not, I'm not saying it's a bad or even weird idea for a game. But, like, this is the first time I've ever played a puzzle platformer where, you know, I, I've, like, looked back and been like, whoa, that is, like, uh, that is what I would expect in an alternate universe a puzzle platformer to be. It is a decidedly puzzle-like game uh, where instead of just using, like, your mouse or something to match three, you, you jump around and shoot blocks. Uh, that is puzzle platforming at its core, I guess. We're kind of, uh, hamstrung here. Uh, there we go. We managed to get some space. Uh, this is the, you know, I don't really understand how you're supposed to plan ahead in this game, so... Not all of my decisions are the best in all likelihood. Oh, man, that's gonna hurt. But I still have a decent amount of health. Just wanna make sure I'm constantly falling in the right space. Uh, this is difficult, by the way. It might look easy, but I assure you that this is more difficult than you would originally uh, anticipate. And the first time you play it, you are probably gonna find yourself getting a very low score. This is the example, or this is the, uh, the product of several minutes of hard-earned training. I don't even know, this must be invincibility. Yeah, dozens of minutes of me learning the mechanics of the game for once. Uh, yes, that must be invincibility. I actually don't know when it ends, I guess it just fades away there. This might be the highest score I've ever gotten. I think I might have won in the 2000s, but as is, I'm pretty impressed with this nonetheless. Maybe I will be able to make myself not look terrible at video games for once in my life. Please destroy that cannon. Those cannons, by the way, I believe are a one-shot kill. Uh, so we have to be very cautious about that. I am leveling down fairly continuously here. This feels like the longest game that I have played uh, of this. For sure. Let's just come over here, get this. We're about to cross 2,000. I would love to level up again because I'm a little bit concerned about my chances moving forward. Um, sure, let's hide out under this cannon and we should be able to get some destruction done here. What I'm concerned about is if a block tries to fall on my head. Uh, we might not be able to run away from it very easily. Keep falling, please. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to try to set a, a new world record high score here. I haven't even come close to the ones. You know, that's like the marker of when you're okay at a, a puzzle game. Is You know, you'd be playing it on the Super Nintendo or something, and you'd finally be able to beat the scores that, like, came on the cartridge. I'm not even fucking close to... Ah, that was really stupid of me. I'm not even close to that metric, so we, we have a long way to go uh, before I'm able to make some great stuff happen there. But I see two sick combos here. Just kind of waiting for me. Oh my god, and those delicious, delicious points. So, in terms of like, th there is a, a moment in this game, in every run of this game, I should say, where things kind of like, start to hit the next level. And I really like when puzzle games do this. There's some puzzle games which just feel like, you know, the whole time you're playing it, they have like kind of a constant experience. I hope that sort of makes sense. You know, get puzzle games that don't really feel like they evolve as you play them, this is not one of them. This is, oh, I got hit by the cannon because I was standing too close to the edge. Alright, that I still think that was my highest score ever though, yeah. Beats uh, Raya's 2137. All right, let's press start here, uh, and, and we'll go back to the main menu. I'm using the Xbox 360 controller, but last night I played uh, my entire play session with the um, keyboard and mouse, and it controls totally fine, as you might expect. So uh, there is also multiplayer in the game. I actually haven't experienced this myself, but it's cool. It's local only, as you might expect, so if you have someone to play it with, that might be an extra incentive, but I can't talk too much about that. There are also these challenges, which I haven't checked out at all, so why don't we check out the spike challenge and just see what's going on with this. I am, I was born ready game, so how's this gonna work? Spikes are gonna fall from the ceiling, and we're gonna have to platform above them, I'm assuming, is the way that this is gonna work. I don't know if it, did it make me start as the ninja? That's weird, alright, I got killed already, so that's terrible. I wanna see if I can maybe get to the end here. I, I, if I can not take the ninja, I would prefer to not take the ninja, but I guess this is our only option. So, you know, it's also cool that the game uh, has kind of unique players, again, like, much like Super House of Dead Ninjas. Uh, there's an element of kind of like every run being a little bit different as a result of that, uh, if you choose that anyway. Oh, oh, I fell in the spikes totally there, but the game sort of glitched out, so I managed to survive. Where is it falling? All right, well, I'm standing on the spikes, and never fear! Okay, this is really weird, actually. Am I actually okay to just stand on the spikes? This is a pre-release build, so it's possible that this is a bug or something. Uh, if so, you know, I don't think it has too much of a deleterious impact on my enjoyment of the game so far, but still, it is unusual. Alright, so I guess it, knowing that we can just walk over the spikes uh, makes this challenge run a little bit easier, I would say. Much like a my favorite challenge runs in The Binding of Isaac. Uh, so let's just keep this up. Alright. I can still fuck this up easily just by, yeah, getting uh, stomped on by some of these blocks, but, uh, you know, as is. 
It's looking like... Ah, oh, I got squeezed in between them! Come on! Alright, well, you know what? That Something's not right about that. Maybe we'll try a new challenge here. Uh, like chainsaws or drills. Uh, sure, let's do chainsaws. And we'll see what's up with this. So we are playing as the ninja again. And I guess... Oh, chainsaws are going to come out of the bottom here. And we're just going to have to avoid them. It's almost like that third boss from Super Mario World. Oh, that was not even close. As you can see, you know, I'm probably not the best player to be demonstrating MLG level gameplay on Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe. Why don't we get back to the uh, the OG game here. And this time we'll play as the uh, Jetpack. I've never played it as, played as him before. Uh, I don't have all of the worlds unlocked. I have uh, Troublesome Tech and also War of the Woods. Now, these might initially just seem like they're aesthetic changes between the levels. Like that one is kind of futuristic and this one's more of a, you know, Disney's Mickey Mouse Magical Quest. It's not really the case. Um, there are also some kind of gameplay mechanics that change as well. Like, for example, uh, this is the first level that's going to introduce those chainsaws. Uh, and by introducing those chainsaws, I don't like this jetpack character at all. I'm just going to come out and say that right now. I've never used him before. His jump's real heavy. I think he can go uh, probably higher in the air than average. And I guess he can do uh, kind of special sections like this right here where he can just, like, jetpack up and then fly away so he, he doesn't have too much risk of dying there uh, but he feels remarkably heavy which is you know I, I'm assuming that the game is balanced uh, mostly because whenever a game is not balanced you're just like really but um, yeah I, I, I would not be surprised if uh, maybe I'm just not getting it effectively let's try that again Mr. Jetpack is real annoying though maybe I'll go back to the ninja if I can go back to the main menu here I haven't really done too well on the second level actually uh, so we'll take uh, our ninja and then we'll try this. I really just like the default character to be honest with you But uh, I want to unlock more characters as well and I'm not quite sure how to make that happen Usually I unlocked like a couple through some kind of high score uh, thing But I'm not 100% sure of how the progression on the game works now You know, it's not just like a reskin of this ninja. We do also have uh, a new attack and every character has their own attributes as well It's not simply like um, you know every character gets uh, uh, like different stats. They also have like different actual moves and th there's like functional differences between them Hopefully that made a little bit of sense there. I kind of lost the plot a little bit as I was saying it But that's also because I'm trying to focus here. Oh, that was kind of close now We'll just stand on these we should get a ton of points for that. Well 64 Not a ton of points a ton of bits if you're gonna make a video game console though uh, Can we get the we can get one of these crates at least? Oh, actually, we might be able to get both. The crates are not super valuable. The treasure chests seem to be way more valuable when they drop, but those are also uh, rare compared to... Oh, there's the chainsaws, as you can see. So how do you kill the chainsaws? I hope I've done a decent job of demonstrating this, but basically, you have to kill a block. This, is, this goes for any uh, kind of negative uh, part of the... or negative block that can drop, by the way. You have to kill a block that's kind of adjacent to it, whether on top or, you know, beside. Uh, and as a result, you will then... Oh, this is not good. This is going to block some of these in, and that's going to cause problems. So in terms of, like, the, the name of the game, is this more a puzzler or a platformer? I got a genius level uh, drop there, which seems a little bit uh, like the game's doing me some lip service. But this is way more platformy than puzzly, and I, I kind of love it for that, because I think, you know, I'm not that into puzzle games. When it comes to platformers, I'm a big, big fan, so... Uh, th this is right up my alley. I didn't expect to like it too much, although, I mean, when I- Oh! Oh, I barely double jumped out of that. Um, when I first, uh, you know, got the code for the game, I didn't know what to expect. Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe. Uh, suffice it to say, I did not expect what we got, and I am super glad that we got what we got. By the way, I haven't really mentioned this yet, but this will be available on Steam, uh, on Friday. I haven't actually seen the price, but judging by, you know, where Super House of Dead Ninjas came out, I would not be surprised if this was five bucks. If it was ten bucks, that would be a little bit more negative, but still, uh, this is a game that I feel is uh, worth it for a lot of people. This is not the kind of game that everybody's going to get a lot of time with. If you're a fan of narrative-driven games, more so than just, uh, you know, pick up and play, maybe like Super Hexagon-style games, you're not really, uh, really going to like this one too much. Just to clarify what I said there, if you're into games like Super Hexagon, uh, or, you know, Super House of Dead Ninjas, or even on kind of like a more esoteric level, something like The Binding of Isaac, uh, games that you can just pick up and play and, and have a really fun time with repeatedly, but there's no real story associated with it necessarily. Ah, oh, I touched the chainsaw! Uh, then then I think this is totally up your alley, especially if this is five bucks. This is a, an, an awesome deal for a game that I feel is really unique, and uh, you know, even though it's got a, an obvious gimmick, the gimmick doesn't wear thin. Or at least it hasn't in the uh, limited amount of time i played with it so far. I mean, this is the kind of game, if you watch my Super Hexagon video, I believe I mentioned this back then, but that was a, that was a while ago, back in like December or November. Um, this is the kind of game where during the video, I'm like, yeah, you know what, I should probably wrap this up. We've shown off probably all we need to show of Super Puzzle Platform Deluxe. At the same time, 
I don't want to. I just want to keep playing. <laughs> I want to I want to get a couple more runs in. I want to see if I can set a high score. I want to show off to you guys that I'm not as bad as I originally appeared. By the way, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. As I'm playing this with the Xbox 360 controller for the first time, uh, I actually am starting to think that the PC controls just feel a little bit better. I'm not sure if the, the controls are uh, rebindable. Oh, this is real bad. Yep. Yeah, let's do one more, though. Um, I'm not sure if the controls are rebindable, but they use the trigger for shooting, but as far as I know, you can't just hold it down. You actually have to, like, keep, uh, repeatedly... Oh, no, you can just hold it down. That's fine. Never mind, then. Uh, on the keyboard and mouse, I believe you use the Z or X keys to do attacking, so it's much like using a, uh, Super Nintendo emulator. Not that I've ever done that, of course. Um, but, yeah, it, it controls fine on both. Now that I know that you can just hold down the trigger, uh, that makes my finger feel a lot better. Much like your mother did last night. So, okay, so why don't we get out of here? My goal for this one, let's get over 2,000. 2,000 is like the upper limit of my score. I'm, I don't know if I've ever gotten to level 3, to be honest with you. Let's see if we can, yeah, there we go. Uh, so, that, you know, that would be awesome too if we could get to the third level. Unfortunately, it might not be possible there. Oh, that was actually awesome. We got 98 for that. I almost got killed by that. Uh, our side of the map is pretty dry when it comes to uh, tiles here. Just slowing down my momentum a little bit, but, you know, also keeping us alive, so that's okay as well. If I have to get 2,000 individual blocks, I will do my damnedest to do so. There we go, we're safe there. And one more, and we're still safe. Alright, that, that's always the most harrowing moment of any run. Oh, except for that right there when the blocks try to fall right on your stupid face. Uh, and keep this up. So we're about a quarter of the way to my goal now that I picked up that gem. Uh, which is, I don't know how those gems drop. I think sometimes they might just be hidden randomly. Uh, in, uh, ooh, that's scary. I don't know if I want to go for that necessarily. Because, uh, oh, it's a cannon. Okay, it's not a chainsaw. If it was a chainsaw, it would have been a lot worse. Because uh, then even standing close to it would have been a real problem. All right, I've leveled down. Was I at level three there for a second? If so, that would be remiss if I didn't at least mention it. We're almost to 1,000. But again, you know, the, the best laid plans of mice and men, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it can all fall apart very quickly here. Uh, you know, one drop is probably not enough to kill us if one block drops on our head, but one spike is enough to kill us. Those are instant kills. Uh, and, you know, one cannon shot, one uh, touch of the uh, chainsaw, those are all enough. So, you know, it's, it's definitely got those moments of, like, sheer panic and heartbreak uh, where things go wrong for you right away. Also, dope soundtrack. Adult Swim, I, I've got to say, there's going to be some people out there who are going to be a little cynical about this because the games, I believe, originally came out for free on their website. And you know what might actually be available for free on their website? Uh, but to Adult Swim's credit, A, these are games that I, I think warrant being available in traditional content distribution styles. This and Super House of Dead Ninjas are both amazing, and I don't know anybody out there uh, who probably feels bad that they paid for Super House of Dead Ninjas. That's a game that a lot of people have gotten a lot of enjoyment out of uh, at a very, very reasonable price. But beyond that, you know, they, they do a good job of, uh, as far as I know anyway, uh, kind of making these editions that actually come out to Steam like director's cuts, for lack of a better word. So it's not simply that they, uh, you know, are like, oh, we could actually make money off this, so let's do it. We are level 3 now. Uh, it's, it's more that um, they're like, okay, you know what, people are... Oh, I've got to get out of here. Yeah, there's nothing I can do. Sadly, that was bad, but uh, it, was a good, it was good fun while it lasted. Uh, but yeah, they're not simply saying like, oh, I didn't realize I was still alive. I thought I was totally killed by that spike. Let's do this, 2,000. Anyway, what I was getting at. Uh, they're not simply saying, like, you know, we can make money on this, so we should. I think they're saying, you know, people are really resonating with this game. Uh, we, we should give them perhaps an opportunity to get a better version, reach a wider audience ourselves, maybe make some money off of it as well, uh, and, and spread our game around to a bigger audience. Because, you know, I, I had previously, this is a little bit ashamed, I'm a little bit ashamed to admit this of myself, but uh, it was 2,000, by the way, but then I died. But hey, we at least crossed the threshold there. Maybe we unlock something? Retro Relic. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a, a new character. Um, but yeah, I, I was I'm a little ashamed to admit that I looked down on those Adult Swim games because like, oh, you know, they're just like browser-based Flash games, man. I, I played Newgrounds when I was 12. Oh, it's not a new character, unfortunately. Oh, and we can see the objectives. Collect three stars in a single play. Collect 500 or more block bits in a single play. Collect six or more jewels in a single play. That might be my next one. Uh, complete the final challenge. Collect ten or more stars in a single play. Those are probably way off. In any case, Super Puzzle Platformer, there will be a link in the video description to play this on Steam. If you are interested, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video entertaining. Landon Pupielski. He's got poo in his name. I apologize, Landon. I don't want to make you feel bad. Uh, in any case, though, it looks like this is a two-game or two-guy joint here, which is pretty impressive. Finally, the final in any case. I hope this video was entertaining. There will be a link in the video description. Check out the store page for this on Steam. This will be out on Friday. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Super Puzzle Platformer Deluxe. Two big thumbs up and a goofy smile on my face uh, for this unique very addictive pick-up-and-play style game. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.